Hey everybody, welcome to the Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress Battle Report. Um, I am starting through the Escalation campaign for Blackstone Fortress. It's a great solo play game, uh, meaning of course during this time of social distancing, I can record some 40k games and you guys can watch us try and find the Shrine of Malix and defeat the four strongholds um, that are basically along the way. I'll introduce some new characters, uh, this new Rogue Trader, um, a new Primaris Psyker, a Crusader, and a Tech Priest, uh, along with retinue characters that will be discovered along the way um, and this one's a bit different from the previous uh, original uh, quest for the hidden vault campaign that comes in the blackstone fortress box set and it's kind of a choose your own adventure so there's a big exploration book it's a bit like silver tower where you'll read a paragraph it'll have you uh, deal a number of exploration cards and you actually have to keep a map navigating the blackstone fortress uh, the shrine of malik or the throne of malik sorry um, as Obsidius Malix, even though he defeated him in the original Hidden Vault, has come back more powerful than ever. He's a bit like um, uh, Megatron turning into Galvatron, sort of, sort of a deal. Uh, and you have to break down his different forecast power shrines before you can actually face him and, uh, and stop him. So things are going a bit hairy. There's some new uh, bad guys as well. The Chaos Cultists have shown up in the Blackstone Fortress, not to be defeated. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so we'll, we'll sh walk you through that. There's some different setup instructions for this quest, which I'll go over as well, um, and we'll get this underway. All right, so here I am set up with all my stuff laid out to start the quest of the Black Shrines. Um, my exploration booklet from Escalation, my mods booklet for the setup instructions, and the core setup uh, for an encounter. I got my new character cards here for Daedalosis, Gottfried, uh, Medellin, and Murad, my... Um, my new characters along with my hostiles uh, and the selection of encounter cards has already been dealt out you add in the chaos cultists but you actually start with significantly more activated bad guys than in the quest for um the hidden vault rogue psychers and beastmen are also in the pool so the difficulty on this is cranked a little bit higher. You'll notice Precipice has a menace tracker attached to it. Every time I do an exploration, I have to add one of these, um, and they basically make things harder, and they're going to go in the data bank as well when this uh, mission's over. So reinforcements become more common. I lose a resource card, uh, and then um, I lose a resource card and more common, and then I lose a resource card. So by the end of it, I'm minus four to all reinforcement rolls, so that's like a a 20% increase in reinforcements showing up for the most part. I think it's one to four or one to three. So yeah, it's still a 20% increase. Uh, and then you're down three resource cards. So like you don't deal out three resource cards when you go to precipice and do your trading and stuff. So there's a, there's a lot going on here, making it a bit more difficult. Uh, you shuffle your exploration deck. You can use any exploration cards from any expansions that you want. Discovery card, likewise, you're gonna shuffle in all the clues and stuff. Um, as far as my existing heroes, they are exactly as they are the quest for the Hidden Vault End. They're kind of my leveled powerful characters. The only thing I've done is I've returned all the Archaeotech cards to the Discovery Pool. So any resource cards they're carrying, they still have, um, which will strip the resource pool a little bit from um, the new explorers. Uh, but all of the clues and discovery cards I put back in because the quest's over and it just made sense to return them. You get two new discovery decks for your two new um, ships. You have Seeker Omicron, which is Daedalosis' ship, and then you have the Ultimatum, which is uh, Murad's ship. Uh, and it also carries Montbard and Medellin. So, resources from both of these, and uh, my new character, X01. He's somewhere dormant, hanging out in the Blackstone Fortress. We might find him as we explore. I've printed off a map. So here's our gateway, we're starting off next precipice. Um, and we have to map basically where we're, where we're gonna be going. Um, and apart from that, that's our, those are our basic setup instructions, ready, ready to rock and roll. Step 12, the leader reads aloud the following text. The maglev transport lurches to into motion, taking the explorers into the heart of Obsidius Malx's dread citadel within the fortress. Their objective is to defeat the reborn chaos lord and break his hold over the area, but first they must locate and destroy the four black shrines, spreading corruption throughout the megastructure. They must not delay though, for with every moment, more weapons systems are brought online and bringing precipice closer to the edge of destruction and that's the fear here is that malix has been reborn his uh, throne is becoming super powerful and that the chaos is becoming so powerful where the black Swan fortress is going to purge all the explorers and destroy precipice i've completed the amble uh, mission as well so the set seven station is built in construction and, and attached here um, and from there we get to close this down and check out the exploration booklet um, so we step inside the maglev transport and input the complex rune sequence following the press instructions you've procured from a data tra traders aboard precipice. 
Once you've completed the procedure, the open wall of the transport folds shut, entombing you inside. For a moment, nothing happens. Then with a shudder, the maglev stirs into motion. As the transport chamber wends its way deeper into the Blackstone Fortress, take a moment to do a final check of your weapons and equipment, and to steel yourself for the horrors that you will undoubtedly soon face. You know that you'll find inside the Citadel of Malix, sorry, you don't know what you'll find inside the Citadel of Malix, but you're certain the Servants of the Abyss will present formidable resistance against your incursion. With a little luck, you may uh, be able to avoid the heaviest patrols and the most monstrous fiends that roam the Dark Corridors for a while at least. The quest before you is simple, if exceedingly dangerous in execution. You must present, uh, prevent the Servants of the Abyss from gaining more control of the Blackstone Fortress. If you fail to do this so, Pre Precipice will certainly fall to their increasing bombardments, and then the entire galaxy shall feel their wrath. Scans have shown a massive buildup of warp energy deep within the fortress, and so it is towards this that you must progress. You must be ready for whatever the followers of the Dark Gods throw in your path, and you should never forget that wherever you go, the Blackstone Fortress is always watching you too. Go to passage 23. So now as we play, I have to record my progress. We're gonna start here, and every time we go to a passage there will be an entry and exit point that we can choose to take and that usually corresponds with a new passage that we read um, that'll allow me to plot my location and of course north is always precipice um, on this map and some things will have chambers that are special and some things will have a challenge we have to sort of participate in and we can also accidentally get lost in the labyrinth and if we do that it's recommended that we just end we either go until we hit a chamber we've already found so we know where we are on the map again um, or it's recommended if you're just completely lost, go back to Precipice and start again, because you can always start your mission from a chamber um, that you know where it is. So basically a place on the map that you've already previously visited. Number 23 is the first passage we have to read. Passage 23, access route. The explorers access the maglev transport and key in the location of Malx's Citadel to reach their destination. However, they must traverse a small region of the fortress popper. Take the top two cards of the exploration deck and place them face down in a stack next to Precipice to create an exploration deck for this access route. Then turn over the top exploration card and resolve the challenge or combat as normal. Once this is completed, resolve the second card in the exploration deck. Once the second one is done, go to chamber side. A bit like doing the old um, fortress runs in uh, the core game, you're going to basically create an access route. So here's the top two cards. We flip the first one, and it's a challenge. Masterful defense. Deal out one discovery card for each explorer and place them face up in a row. In leader order, each explorer can attempt to take one of the cards. In order to take an architect card, the explorer must uh, make a number of defense rolls equal to the card's value and not fail any. In order to take a clue card, they must make three defense rolls and not fail any. If the explorer fails any of these rolls, they suffer a wound for each roll they failed. After each explorer that wishes to attempt to do this uh, may take a card, they may remain as shuffled back into the discovery deck. So, <laughs> Naam Shemarad gets an Archaeotech. Aradia Medellin finds an Archaeotech. Gottfried finds an Archaeotech. And Adatalosis finds an Archaeotech. Gottfried, he's got, he's got sweet, sweet defensive D12. He'll try and take his Archaeotech. He only has to make one roll to do this. Uh, everyone else is at least a D8, but we're just going to use Gottfried. He fails. Takes a wound. Just put the rest of those back, because that seems like uh, how this is going to be. Suck diddly up, Godfrey. You've like, done a little bit better. Hey, that was good. That was good, too. That was also good. Our second access route card is Secret Knowledge. The leader secretly writes on the name of a type of hostile. The other players can then ask a total of three questions. Questions that must not be phrased so that they can be answered yes or no. Uh, after the leader has answered the question, the players can take a guess. They ask correctly, the players reroll failed attack rolls against this type of hostile into the next combat. If there's only one player controlling the explorers, replace this card with a new card randomly drawn from the exploration deck. Hey, yeah, that combat. All right, combat set up. Maglev here. Uh, four hostile groups one, two, three, and four. Let's see what we got. It's Negavold Cultists, Traitor Guardsmen, Urghuls, and. Uh, Negable cultists. This will end up being just three, but it's zero because it's not a number three. Uh, so this one's all four. It's five trader guardsmen. So leader, flamer, everybody else. Two Urghuls on number three. And then number four ends up being empty. All right, destiny first. Uh, we got double fives, which are going to lock out, but then everything else is going to go in the pool. Uh, worth going over what our supports are here. So for Seeker Omicron, oh, I should deal out two other ships at random. Advanced mapping routines, once per expedition, when exploration guards turn face up, the leader can use the advanced mapping routines and they can just treat it as being resolved. Cool, I get a mulligan. And then ultimatum, boarding parties, once per expedition after deploying hostiles start of the combat, the leader can choose an encounter card from the combat track to replace. Move that card from the combat track and replace it at the bottom of the encounter deck, then draw the top encounter card and replace it. We're going to deploy hostiles from this discarded card and deploy the hostiles listed in the new one instead. So I can basically do a redraw. 
way to avoid Malik's if you start stomping around. Not that I think he will in this one. An additional ship, so I'm gonna treat this as a D21, I guess. We'll have the Eye of Vect be the last two, the high dice. Uh, nine, so that's gonna be the third one from the bottom. One, two, three. It's gonna be Long Hauler Gamma. And then the second one, basically re-rolling threes and nines. Uh, that's gonna be the next one, which would be number four, which is Clarion. We'll give us Cogitator Bank. Uh, we can basically keep uh, available all of our sweet, sweet Destiny dice, which we love. And then Clarion, um, you can basically do Gambits without spending activation dice. Some activation rolls for Daedalosis. He's gonna have a whole lot of twos and a five. Now he has a designate target ability. Um, when he's activated, you can pick a hostile that's visible and uh, place a designated target marker next to it. When Explorer takes a weapon action, I gets targets a hostile with a designated target marker next to it. The player can reroll one action die. Uh, remove the designated target marker if the chosen hostile is slain or at the start of the next activation. And then Omniscan on a three plus, in addition to his like eradication pistol and servo claw, um, he can basically take black sun markers to gain uh, inspiration point. So he searches the, the discovery markers for um, inspiration on a 16 plus. And then for Godfrit, uh, he's super, he's wounded right now, so he's gonna have three dice. Uh, he gets a three, a four, and a five, though. He can shield wall on a six, uh, to connect once per activation. Um, and you put it beside him. If he's visible to a hot attacking hostile, only Godfrit or explorers that are adjacent to visible to the hostile can be chosen as a target of an attack. In addition, when the shield wall marker is beside Godfrit to Montbard, you can reroll failed defense rolls for him, remove the shield marker the next time he's activated or he's taken out of action. So basically, you can throw up a shield wall when you can see somebody and they have to attack you or people that are in the adjacent squares. And then Secret Agenda, if you make three successes or critical successes on a defense roll in a single turn, it gets stacked made by hostiles from the same hostile group. So if you get jumped by people and you make three, he inspires. So nobody here has inspiration cards that make them permanently inspired, which is probably good because it tones down some of the characters from the, the last expansion. Uh, not a great role for Niam. She's basically a shooting version of Janice Drake. Uh, she does the same sort of like multi shots that he did dueling, that uh, but at range. So she reverses basically what he does. And for Gunslinger, on a six she can make three attacks. On a four she can make two attacks. On a one she can make one attack. Um, with her dual negotiator. Sorry, when she just uses a single negotiator pistol. He's got a servo skull targeting network. Uh, she makes a weapon action and aimed weapon action. Any other action she takes in the same activation will also ignore cover. So as soon as she makes a aimed attack, basically, the rest of them all ignore it. And then quick draw, uh, when Niam Shad Murad ends an activation with dice remaining to use on Overwatch, do not remove activation dice with a score of one, or reduce the value of the rest of them, which is awesome, because she's fast at shooting. And if she slays three hostiles with single negotiator pistols weapon action, so basically if she kills three people with a single like dual action, um, then she gets to inspire. And then Aradia, uh, she's gonna get a six, which is sweet, because she can use her uh, smite then, which just auto does a grievous wound. Um, and she's got that on a six, uh, actually be taken once per phase. One hostile that's close to Radiant Invisible takes a Grievous Wound. And other hostiles in the sa uh, same hex take a wound. So she just like blows people up. And then Psychic Boost, pick one of Radiant Invisible's unused activation dice and swap it with an unused activation dice with a lower score on another player's card. So she can pass off dice to people, which is sweet. And then during an expedition, uh, at the end of the Destiny phase, all five dice show a unique number. So if she, if we basically, if we get a straight, she inspires to a straight. I guess you could have a non-straight. Um, because you get like a mix in there because it's six numbers, not five. And so that's basically our beginning. Our activation dice are done. Let's see what the initiative is and then declare any gambits. Group two, group one. Godfrit, which is good because he needs to heal or recuperate rather. It looks like everybody's getting to go before us. Uh, three, and then I uh, notice I sleeve these two. One of the things I noticed in the last uh, campaign was your your hostile cards, at the very least, sort to get really dog eared shuffling them all the time. So I went and got some small Euro sleeves to put these in. Covering fire, we could swap. Anybody want to swap? I think Aradia and I think they're actually pretty happy. We might swap. Nam with uh, Aradia because Daedalosis wants to mark targets first. Uh, Godfrey's pretty happy. No gambits. We're not spending dice this turn because nothing can see us. And it's activation phase. Choose the sweet, sweet trader guardsmen. Let's see what they do. Uh, front guy, four. That's going to be hidden, a sneak. So he's going to move towards us. So we're going to go one, two. Stay on the last sight. Uh, the next one, hidden's a nine. Advances. Moves two as well. Can't fire. Uh, Mr. Flamer, ten. He gets an advance as well. So he'll move two and not be able to fire. Uh, the Sarge is gonna go 13, uh, which is charge. Try to attack adjacent if possible, one, two, can't see, one, two, moves again. Look out the last gun. 
He gets a 16, which is also a charge. So he'll follow the Sarge. One, two, no one adjacent, one, two. All right, uh, and then we have Hostile Group 1, which is going to be Team Negavolt Cultist. So the closest one gets a 16, and that's a charge. So he'll move one, two, can't attack adjacent, one, two. Next one, 12, charge as well. One, two, one, two. One back from that, 17, still a charge. Basically everything's a charge hidden. One, two, one, two. Move three, it'll be here and here. And the last one, uh, 14, also moves three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Getting real, uh, the no defense roll thing is not gonna be great for us. Uh, all right, well, let's see what we can see. We've got Gottfried up now. Hmm. Defense rolls, I mean, they've gone already. I might be able to kill a bunch of them. I'm gonna spend a two off the Destiny board with Godfrey, his first Destiny die, to attempt to um, do a vitality check and get that wound off me. Give me a success, we got it. So we get to flip that wound off. You do a lunging strike, which uh, on a one, step into swing when taking a lunging strike action, Godfrey can move a hex towards the closest hostile visible before resolving that attack action. It won't get me into melee, unfortunately. Uh, cutting down the foe and taking a hacking advanced weapon action, Godfrey can make two attacks, and you can move Godfrey one hex towards the closest visible after resolving each of these attacks. So I need four pluses or five pluses to do those. I don't have any five pluses at all, which means all I'm able to do here is do lunging strikes. I'm spending the three to move two, because that's what he does. One, two, and I guess we just start making stabs. Stab off of here, lunging strike. Uh, it's gonna be two D8s. If we can do a super wound here, it'd be sweet. We do one wound. That negative old cultist shrug it though, because of his power field. He does not. Uh, then we'll spend another four, I guess, to do it again. 2d8. Kills him. Oh, unless he shrugs it. 20 or less. Uh, 19, I think that actually does shrug it. Oh, 20 plus, only, oh, there's two people in the field. Yeah, yeah, thought that he's just gonna shrug that one. Well, we'll try again. Can we do it? Uh, single wound, kills him, unless he rolls an 18 or more. Nope, I'll kill him that time. Do it again. I mean, he's got a really good up-close attack, so we might as well. If we get a Grievous Wound, we kill him. We did. Ninth, or it's 20 now. No, no, that'll just kill him. And I can take a step forward before, not after. One on a four or less. Two, I do. It's group four, which is negative occultist, which means they get to make a reinforcement roll. Four or less, see if some of these guys come on. Eight, no. It's group three, which is two Urghuls. Uh, first one gets a 14 hidden, which is a charge. And they can move three, I believe. Yep. So they're gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three. Next one, two, which is a hold. Oh, it's everybody else, so Daedalosis gets to go. Now unfortunately, Godfrey's standing in a very inconvenient position because he's blocking line of sight to everybody. But that's okay, we can still do things. We just need to We just need to be not standing there probably when this is done, we're out of Destiny Dice. So Daedalosis wants to mark a target at least. He wants to kill that flamer, but he can't. He really wants to kill these Negable cultists because they're terrifying. You need at least two dice to get into line of sight. So he'll spend, and he needs a four plus to do his servo claw attack, which is bad. So I think he's gonna use a two to move, and he moves two. So one, two, no one's in line of sight. Uh, he'll use a two to move again. <sighs> I really wanted to servo claw that Urghul. Or I could shoot, we just shoot. We're gonna go one, two, and then we're gonna shoot our Radicator pistol on a one plus. It's 2d6, uh, but pick the highest. So maybe I kill, we'll, we'll shoot the uh, the sergeant just in case if I get that lucky crit. I do! Kills him with a grievous wound. Uh, and then he'll shoot, well, he's, only got a, he's got a four plus to spend, which means he could make a server claw attack, but no one's gonna come near him. So I think we designate target onto this guy, just free during my activation. And I guess we'll just spend that four plus to make our attack against him. Nothing, but I can reroll one attack die because he's designated and I crit him, he dies. Sweet, five or less and we get an inspiration point. Nope, Radia gets to go. She moves, I think just two as well. And she's got a whole pile of dice. So she'll she use a two or a one rather to move and she'll go one, two. Then, I think we smite. the six. So we're gonna, one hostile's closest to Roddy Invisible. Oh, we can't do that then. We'll four staff the Urghul first, because then maybe we can smite them to death. Four staff, it's a D12 into the Urghul, see if we can kill him. 
crit, he dies. It's six to smite into here. Now it's an 18 for him to shrug it. He doesn't, he dies. And then he'll take a wound, he'll shrug it on a 20. No, he takes a wound. Question is, do we move out of the way so that she can keep shooting? Yes, I think we do. We spend the two and we take a walk and just move up with Daedalosis so we can make room for Neom who goes next. And she'll spend her one to walk. She only moves two, so she's gonna go one, two, and then she'll spend a three to walk again and go one. And then I guess she'll shoot into that uh, wounded fella with her pistols. Uh, she'll spend the four boss to do it twice. 2d8, does a grievous wound. Does he shrug it? No, he does. Did um, Aradi inspire five or less? She did. She got an inspiration point for killing the uh, Urgul and that uh, other Negable cultist. Uh, Neom has a three left with which to do something. She might as well just move again. We're gonna head this way and go one, two, I think. Inspire on a two or less? No. In around a uh, unique escalation event table, what happens? A 16. Inspiration. The leader picks an explorer and they receive an inspiration point. Hmm. I think we give it to Gottfried because we want to inspire him. Right. Destiny roll. Let's see what happens. We'll make Aradia the leader now. Destiny roll. Uh, threes and fours lock out. All we have is a single five. Not the best destiny roll. Nice for Neom. Pretty good. For Aradia. Super sweet. Well, we can get a smite off too, which is nice. For Godfrey, give me some fives and sixes. Let me see that hack in advance. Oh, sweet. And a shield wall, potentially. And then for Daedalosis, not bad either. All right, initiative for this turn. Group one, Daedalosis is going to go. Murad's going to go. Arati is going to go. Hey, we're getting the jump on people here. Godfrey's going to go. Okay, well, sweet. <laughs> group two. Group three and group four, the opposite last turn, basically. Able the Negable Occultists, which is handy because that means hopefully they don't make their, their reinforcement roll and you just get to go do stuff. Negable Occultists, do not come back. Um, so what do we want to do here? Oh, do I want to do any covering fire? I wasn't going to do any gambits, but I could have done some covering fire. Mm, we're pretty happy actually where we are. Godford could go murder those dudes. Maybe Godfrey goes and murders those. I, I don't really want... I mean, everybody gets to go first. It doesn't really matter. We'll go with... No one's getting there in... Actually, Godfrey will get there in two moves. Everybody else is wasting moves to get there. Nah, we'll do it. We'll keep Daedalus where he is. We'll just keep everybody where they are. It's fine. Let's go first. Um, he's got a two, which he'll spend a move. One, two. Uh, he'll move again, because he's not getting anywhere where he is. He'll go one, two. He'll mark target on these idiots. And then he will, I guess, make Eradicator pistol attacks. He might as well. Uh, onto the first melee guy, kills him. Second melee guy, gets reroll one. Nope. So he kills this guy. All of his action dice. So does he inspire on a two or less? No. It's Neom. Does she want to go down here and hunt down this Urgul? I mean, yes. <laughs> Yeah, but then, no, the other one went the other way. Let's just go. We're gonna move and go one, two. And then I think we just stay there because if this guy comes right around the corner, ah, uh, no, we'll move again. Cause she doesn't reduce her dice. We'll go one, two. And she'll just back up basically holding her pistol out and waiting for him to run into the open. It's Aradia's turn. She'll spend her two to move one, two. And then she'll spend her first four to move up to here. And then I guess she'll melee with her four staff and see if she can murder. D12. Does a wound. And then I guess she smites <laughs> and just kills this guy. Then I guess we go with Gottfried. Oh, does she inspire? Two or less? No. Uh, Gottfried's gonna go. He's gonna spend most of his amazing action pool just to walk around. He'll go four and four to go one, two, three, four. But now he can do his hacking swing at least. Six to do it, so he can move his square before he resolves it. Sweet, and then he makes two attacks. I think it's Mr. Flamer Man. Does a grievous swing and kills him. No, he does not. He'll keep that six though, just in case. Actually, he'll shield wall for that six. And throw up a, throw up a, come through this portal, I dare you. Do any traitor guardsmen come back on? Nope. 
Uh, Urgles get to go. So what we want to see is a uh, reinforcement roll. Two, they do. All the Urgles come back. Hooray. See, they're just gonna come right back to this portal. And then uh, behavior roll, sorry, they make, the one that reinforces makes an advance. One, two, three. And then this one makes an actual behavior roll. That's a 12, which is charge. So one, two, three, one, two, three, can't be seen. It's event team. Event of five, not dead yet. Leader must pick one hostile that was slain during the combat and does not return to the battlefield and then deploy them as close to the explorer as possible. We'll just bring you back, Mr. Lasgun. Uh, and you can go fight Godfrey. Sweet. Here's our destiny dice. All right, destiny. Uh, double fours lockouts, no inspiration for the Psyker. Action dice for Neom, not bad. Just make a couple extra gun attacks. Uh, for Radia, pretty good too, but no smite. She has one on the Destiny board if she wants it though. Uh, for Gothrit, oh, he's tired, tired from all that killing. Uh, <laughs> no hacking advance for him, but there's two on the Destiny board if he wants to make them. And then Daedalosis gets a couple of things in a six, so you could make a um, Servo Claw attack. See the initiative, it's gonna be Neom, Gothrit, number three, which is the Urgul's. Aradia, and then two, oops, four, one, and last but not least is Daedalosis. Covering far Daedalosis and Aradia because they can see each other, and that means I can at least mark targets a little bit if I want. Or I could keep her where she is and Godford could go. Hmm. We could drop Godford. Because Neom could change with, yeah, Neom could change there. I think we're good. Neom could change with Aradia, which is fine. And then Godford could change with Daedalosis, which is also fine. Shieldwald, which is probably going to keep me being okay. Um, and I have a million, like, I can negotiate or pistol these Urgles as they come towards me. <laughs> so, we could just do that. That means Arati can go first, and we could go walk around a little bit, which I think is what we're going to do. So she's just going to take a walk. She's going to go with her third, actually, she'll take the one off Destiny board. And move one, two. Then she will go again. One, two. Then she'll search for a four, top discovery card, and it's an Archaeotech, super sweet. Um, and then she will just walk again, one, two, and she'll summon the Maglev with her last four plus. And that means our exit's gonna end up being over here. It's Daedalosis' turn. Um, he will mark, I guess, this idiot over here, because why not? Uh, and then he's gonna take a bunch of walks. So he can move six with his first three dice. Needs to move one, two, three, four, five. Yep, so he's all those. Actually, he's gonna go one, two, one, two. And then he's gonna make a servo claw attack, because he might as well, with the six off his thing. Gives him a sweet, sweet D12 into this uh, guardsman. And I can reroll it, because he's marked. Don't spend a three to move again. And only actually, he's only able to move one square. Actually, he'd be here. He'd go. Oh, he's here. One, two. Then he'd go one. That's right. He'd only be here right now. Yep. That means <laughs> I won't be able to get to that thing. Hmm. Because I'll be adjacent. Yeah, nothing I can do about that. Yep, yeah, we'll just stay there. We'll even use it and hopefully next turn we'll be able to go over there and find that that, that thing. Uh, and that means that it's group three's time, which is the Urgles. Uh, no reinforcements because they're on the table. Uh, the front one, two, which is hidden, is a hold. And then the other one, 19, it's a charge. So one, two, three, can't see, one, two, and I get to shoot it. Just use a one plus and shoot a negotiator pistol at it. Nope. Turn, she'll spend the four to do double negotiator pistol shots into it. So two D8s, uh, first one, kills. She'll spend one to move and go one, two, and then she'll shoot him again uh, with her five into this guy. And reroll one, because it's marked, nope. And the second shot, because it was a four or better, kills him. Less for inspiration, no. The guardsman, 
Wow, they reinforce one, so it's all of them, and they're gonna show up uh, as close as possible. All immediately gonna attack. <laughs> Good thing I haven't activated that guy yet. Last pistol in the Daedalus. Um, last pistols are two to three, one d6. So it needs a crit in the Daedalus. Nope. And second one, nope, it's in cover. Uh, and then flamethrower also is gonna be, be in the Daedalus. I have to attack Godfrey. It didn't matter because. Uh, oh no, actually they would have hit Godfrey with their last pistols in that case uh, on the second one. Let's try and block it with a d12. And he does, it's fine. Because I can't remember if I hit twice or not, he blocks it anyway. Because <laughs> he's got the shield wall, which means they have to attack him. Mr. Flamer is going to be a d12, because he's within two to three. And a got for it. Does it hit? Uh, does he block it? Yes. Um, and then a uh, pistol melee weapon from the sergeant. Does it crit? It drops down to a regular wound. Shield wall, knock out the one. And then the last gun is a d8. Does a wound. Got for its shield wall. Blocks. That's group four, which is going to be the negable cultists. They reinforce. They don't. Uh, group one, which is the, uh, sorry, other negable cultists. They do not reinforce either. Sorry, it's, it's two groups. <laughs> and then who's going to get killed by Godfrey? He's got some dice. Uh, so we'll use a three to move. And we'll go one, two. He loses his shield wall counter. And the five to make a lunging strike. Yes. Let's find a three to make, yeah, three to make a lunging strike. And he's inspired actually, because he made three success or critical success rolls in a single turn against attacks made by a hostile from the same hostile group, which was sweet. Uh, and that means he's rolling d12s now. <laughs> he'll do his step into the swing. Uh, so he'll make a move first to here, and then he's gonna attack into the uh, flamer, I guess. 2d12. He executes that guy. Uh, then he'll attack into the sergeant. Yeah, because sergeant's more dangerous with his four. And he'll do a wound. He'll make a hacking advance uh, into the sergeant. Does another wound, and then into the uh, other guy. Does a crit and kills him. Let's put in the six to throw up a shield wall, and just be there penning everybody in. Uh, he killed two guys, so on a four or less, he will inspire. Don't phase. 12. Alarm tripped until the end of the next turn. Reroll reinforcement rolls of 11 to 20 that do not call hostiles to arrive. <laughs> oh no. Alarm starts going off, We're, things are beeping. So destiny phase. Uh, oh, everything but a six locks out, which is no no good. And then action dice. Nayam is riled up. They know it's time to go. Uh, Aradia. She's also riled up. And oh, geez, why did I roll five dice? That was a good roll too. Damn it, Ash, Quit screwing up. Uh, not not terrible still. Only three dice for Godfrey because he's wounded. Uh, he's getting mad too though. And then four dice for Daedalosis. He's ready, he's ready to leave. He's ready to take a walk. It's gonna be Nayam, group two, group four, Aradia, group three, group one, Godfrey, and Daedalusis. Now, uh, Aradia's ready to go. <laughs> but people might pour in towards us still. What do we wanna do here? I think we just want to covering fire Nayam down because that way she'll get rushed. She can see Daedalosis and Godfred. She's going to jump to Godfred. Godfred can go first and deal with these fools. And then Daedalosis can't see Naradia, so I think that's it. Godfred, I mean, you could just murder everyone which is probably what you're gonna do. Uh, so go ahead and murder everyone. <laughs> you're already inspired. Uh, attack that sergeant first with just your one off the card. Kills him. And then into, we'll do a five to do the hacking advance. So double attacks followed by move. Kill one. And then second attack. Kills the other one. <laughs> yeah, you are not messing around today. And you can make a free move. So you'll fall up to here. I guess you spend a six to search, because why not? You find an Archeotech, and the two goes away, and then do you just want a shield wall? 
or you want to get moving? Might as well just shield wall. Because the reinforcements might show up because we're re-rolling everything right now. So you'll shield wall right there in case these guys come back. Operation point. Eight or less? No. Love killing Morty. <laughs> um, so now it's on to group two, which is going to be the guardsmen. I reroll 11 pluses. No, it's a 10, so they don't come back. Uh, that's group four, which is the Negable cultists. I reroll the 11 plus. Nope. Radia. Uh, does she want to swap a die with somebody? Not really. Uh, she could give Godford a die if she moves in the line of sight. She doesn't even need to. She can just give it to him. It doesn't really matter. He can't recoup right now. But why not? In case something terrible happens. She'll give him this one, then she'll just move and move. So one, two, stay in there. Covering fire. Three, that's gonna be the Urgles. Uh, do not make the reinforcement roll, but they can reroll it. Oh, she's sorry, they can't reroll because it was less than 11. Not that the reroll mattered. Uh, this guy, 14 for an Urgul who is hidden. Is I think a charge? Charge, yep. So one, two, three, not adjacent. Uh, we can shoot first though. We might as well. We'll spend a four to negotiate a pistol somebody. He's even, so two shots. Uh, does a wound, followed by kills him. Activation though, so no inspiration points. Group one for negable cultists. Uh, 10, can't reroll because not 11 plus. Well, you might as well just move your neon, uh, which means you're gonna go, you have three dice. One, two, three, four, five, six, and be finished. Uh, Daedalosis can spend all eight to go eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And hang it over here next to the door. Godfrey's all by himself. Phase seven. Changing conditions. Drawing a counter card if the card has a twist applied, otherwise, no effect. It's no effect. Stay for the new turn. Mm, locked at the sixes, unfortunately. It's a move dice there, potentially, for Godfrey, even though he's like jacked up and wounded. Uh, four for Neon. We're all just getting in the elevator at this point. Because I think I've got the movement to do it now for Aradia. Looking pretty happy too. Daedalosis. More than enough to get where he wants to go. And then for Godfrey. Oh, sorry, I has three. Never mind, not that it matters. A six, a two, and a four. Give uh, Neom group three. Group two, group four, looks like we're all going last. Group one, lots of reinforcement rolls are gonna happen. And then it's Radia. He's got for last, Daedalosis. Got for all alone? Yep, got for all alone. Nice, well, I mean, Neon will just walk in and stand there. Use the two, take a step. I'm going overwatch with everything, but not reduce it. Reinforcement rolls, so no longer uh, the alarm tripped, which is nice. So one to throw, say the hostile group three, which is the Urgles, don't show up. Group two, which is the Guardsmen, don't show up. Uh, group four, which is Negable Cultists, don't show up. And then one, which is also Negable Cultists, they do show up. Uh, they are, no, they don't show up, actually it's on three or less, my bad. It's everybody else, Aradia just stands there, uh, puts everything on Overwatch. We will move with Daedalosis and go one, two. Uh, and everything goes on Overwatch, and then I've got Godfrey. He's gonna okay. How far away am I? I'm one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven away. So I need to make six moves, just everything. Then I can't try and heal. I can try and heal to start of the next adventure, though. So I'll do that. So just move everything. I can only use two dice. Never mind. Ugh. Ugh. I can only move eight. There's gonna be another turn no matter what I do. That's right, because I only use two off of this. Well, we use the one. Try and make a vitality roll. Let's see if we heal. We do. So we get our wound back, and then I can move eight. That's all I can do. Uh, is there a six I can use? There is not. But I shield wall on a four plus because I'm inspired. Never mind. So we'll go one, two, uh, three, four, five, six. And that's it because I can only use a grand total of three. Four, sorry. Seven, eight. Just stand there. And what happens? 18. Heroic effort, leader picks an explorer is out of action. Deploy the explorer if the new one out of action, make a vitality roll for the explorer. Ha! <laughs> oh, that would have been nice. I <laughs> don't have to make a vitality roll, so. Everybody everybody heroically efforts, but for no reason. Destiny roll, I don't think anyone can get to us this turn. Uh, triple threes is pretty interesting, so that's gonna go away. And then a four and a five. For Nayam, who's just gonna be sitting in the elevator. Really what matters here is the initiative. For Radia, who's gonna be sitting in the elevator. And then for Daedalosis, come on. Big numbers, no whammies. 
And then for Godfrey, who's back to healthy. He's super riled up too. Initiative, group three. Godfrey, of course. <laughs> Aradia, uh, group four, group one. And then group two. And Daedalus is in the arm. Since we're group three, which is the guardsmen, they show up, all of them do. Okay, uh, as close as possible to an adventure. So over here, they can't see us, they all just move. So the alarm was still tripped. <laughs> uh, for Godfrey, he'll just take a walk. He'll use both these dice. Go one, two, one, and then shield wall with one of his sixes, and then overwatch everything else. Four, mm, nothing. Group one, nothing. Group two, nothing. Everybody else stands in the elevator, and that's game. So we've discovered chamber seven, and now chamber seven has passage 14, passage 15, uh, which will go here and here. And then uh, we cannot go back to passage 23, which is the way we came in, which is the access route. So we cannot summon Jason that portal. That makes sense, because that's where we're coming in. Uh, and we're going to set up this combat encounter. All right, so here's the chamber set up. It's the gateway. It's the gateway in. Uh, there's going to be three encounters. So we've got rogue psychers, never good. We've got spindle drones and... Trader Guardsman. She debris. It costs two X of movement uh, instead of one to enter a hex with a cover hex side. Oof. Slow things down significantly. <laughs> um, but it's just spindle drones, two spindle drones, and two rogue psychers, and four Trader Guardsmen. Do you feel like that means going for this exit instead of this exit, going to passage 14 instead of 15, might make more sense? Let's cover in between us that way, and then, yeah. And, and it'll just be generally less, less awkward getting there. And also, there's a free discovery marker on the way. All so Destiny roll, not too shabby, locks at the threes. Neon's gonna get an okay roll. We're mostly probably moving this turn anyway, which is nice. Aradia, holy moly, she's mad. Probably because there's Rogue Psychers around. Daedalosis, also probably just taking a walk. And then the man, the legend, that's Godfrey, who's inspired. He's got something to put a shield wall up, that's sweet. Our initiative looks like it's gonna be a Radia first. Oh yeah, the Rogue Psychers have her all riled up. Then Godfred, Hostiles 1, Daedalosis, Hostiles 2, Hostiles 3, which is just debris, which is just rocks on the ground, and then Neon. Okay with that for covering fire, because she's gonna be able to murder anybody who comes too close anyway. Um, in this case, which is the Rogue Psychers are going right after Godfred and um, and uh, Radia. All right, well, it's Radia first. She's gonna have to do some moving. She's got two sixes, which means she can smite potentially. She can also give a six to somebody else. Not that anyone's going before her. So we might actually want to have Godfrey go first. Do we want to do covering fire? Yeah, I think we do actually. I think we want Godfrey to go first. Because he can then move and then steal a six from her. Uh, so using the two and the three. To go one, and then one, and then do we want to move one more? Yeah, we'll spend the two over here to move one more. Because everything's got cover on it. Uh, and then if we spend the four, we can do a lunging strike. Yeah, but the problem is there's no point because we move afterwards. So we'll do the lunging strike using the four. Yeah, using R4, using this 4, using this 4 to stamp forward and make one swing on 2d8 and we'll attack the flamer because it's hyper dangerous. Kill it! Mm, just a damage. Inspiration point to reroll this die though. Just a damage. Already inspired. Um, then we'll spend our own 4 plus through hacking advance and we'll attack the flamer again and kill him and then we'll attack the sergeant and do a wound. We'll spend the six to do another hacking advance. We can move a square during that, so actually we will move a square to here. Um, and we'll attack the sergeant and kill him. And then we'll attack, I guess, this guy and kill him too. Six off the board for shield wall, because why not? Is that my third destiny die? That was my third destiny die. Yes, I can't actually do that, because that was three destiny dice. Shield wall. <laughs> do I inspire though? Eight wounds? No, seven wounds. Nope. Roddy gets to go. Uh, she'll just do a bunch of moves, I guess. Or first she'll spend a one to give a six to... Oh, we can just give the four, actually. Give the four to Godfrey, so you could potentially overwatch. Guess we do... Do we just want to walk a bunch? We have two sixes. 
The problem is that he's still closest. <laughs> I like to have smited them, but he's still closest. We could not kill him with either of these dice, I don't think. So I think we'll use a six to move and go one. We'll use a six to move again and go one. And then, do we bother smiting? Yeah, we'll just save it. We'll save that six. Force and rolls for the Rogue Psyker group. They don't get one. Um, but we could see uh, some terrible things from the Rogue Psykers. So the first one, it's close. 15. That's a disrupt. See, nice chosen my players discarded. Ugh. So this one's gone. And the second one. Uh, who is, sorry, that was close. Oh, never mind, that's Onslaught, actually. We keep our six, he's not hidden. Uh, close is two to three, so all 15 is Onslaught, and that means, I think, attacks or rerolls. Two attacks. Um, it is not empowered. Eight, needs a crit. Duh, gets a wound. Do we block it? No, but we'll spend inspiration point to reroll. We do. That's uh, so no inspiration points left. And then it's second attack. A crit again. And blocks it yeah, because of the cover. Uh, so the second trigger, <laughs> Rogue Psyker, gets a 15 as well, which is Onslaught. So into Godfrid's, uh, it's a D8. Nothing, and then it does it again because of Onslaught. Uh, gets a hit, it's just a basic wound. He blocks it. Cover's working for me slightly. <laughs> and they're done, so it's Daedalus's time. Or sorry, Data, Data, Daedalus's? Daedalosis. Uh, and he's just gonna spend a whole bunch of days to move because he's slow as hell. And we could data, well, I guess we'll mark both these guys, because maybe the bro trader can kill them. And then he's got one, two to move. So one, two, and then he'll move again and go one, two this time. And then he'll move a last time and go one, two. Do you want to pick it up? No, we'll save it for Neon. Two, do they reinforce? Or so they, they don't reinforce because nothing happens. So the closest one rolls a one, hidden. Hold, second one. 19, hidden, advance. So moves uh, one, two towards the closest. I think it's gonna be Godfrit, so one, two. And then attacks if we can. That's a level one spindle drone, or level zero, sorry, so just d6. Uh, doesn't hit, because it's in cover. It's just the debris, so nothing there, and then it's Naom's turn. She's gotta try and kill these guys. She's gotta move a bunch first, though. Uh, so she'll go and spend two dice to move. One, two, so one, two. Actually, she'd go one, two to there. It's gonna cost her more to get out then. She needs to get within three. To be really good. Really better off going here. Yeah, and then she'll spend another one. She'll spend a three to move one, two. Go four. Take one step, and then she'll spend the six off the board to do Blasty Blastersons, which is three attacks with Negotiator Pistol. They're in cover though. Ugh, do I bother? We'll do him first. She could have aimed it first. <laughs> now nah, we'll just do three shots in that guy. First one, kills him. Or sorry, he does a wound. Second one, kills him. Because he crits the hit. She can do, because he's adjacent. Reroll because of the thing? Uh, nope, because he's in cover. Not in cover, because he's not in the hex with cover. Uh, and that means, does he drop it on a 20 plus? Nope, takes a wound. Oh no, he's got a friend, so he doesn't, because he gets the bonus, just like the Negable Cultists. Does she get an inspiration point on a one or two? No. Round six. Not dead yet. We must pick a hostile that was slain and not returned and put it as close as possible to an explorer. I guess this guy comes back. Right there. Destiny for the new round. What do we got? Uh, lots of doubles, everything with the six locks out, which is not great. We're gonna try and rush this door. Uh, lots of fours for the lady, Aradia, get some twos and threes, and then it's Godfrit, who's super inspired still, getting all the sixes in the world, and a Daedalosis, also getting some sixes, not that he really does much with them. For the round, Aradia is going to go first, group one, group three, then Nayam, who could just murder people with guns this turn, Daedalosis. Godfrits and Hostiles too. So covering fire, I think we trade. Daedalus can't see Nayam, unfortunately, because he could have 
marked targets for me. They stay marked until my next activation, so it doesn't even matter. So we'll just have uh, Nayam jump to the front and hopefully kill some dudes with, with bullets. And Daedalus could swap with Godfrey, which he will. And that's it, no no gambits necessary. Let's see what we want to do with Nayam. So she can, as soon as she does an aimed attack action, so she's spent out of aim, all the rest of her attacks become aimed. <laughs> I don't know how to waste any of these fours, but I will. So we'll waste a four to aim, and now everything else becomes aimed. So she'll spend a four plus, and she's gonna shoot into a Rogue Psyker. So this ignores cover now, and she's got her two D8s. So Rogue Psyker uh, does a crit, does three, does he block it on a 16? He does. Mind, it's if he's empowered. Ah, uh, not if he has a friend there. She doesn't block it. Takes three. Nice. And then second shot into the next one. Uh, does a regular wound, but we'll reroll because it doesn't need a target. Nope. Does a wound. Does he block it on a 20? Does not. And then uh, we'll spend another four plus to do another shot into him. Does a grievous wound. Does he block it on a 20? Nope. Kill him. Shot's wasted because they're not adjacent to each other over here. So she'll spend a five for another shot, pair of shots into this guy. And he just dies. She killed three hostiles. Uh, during expedition, slay all three hostiles with a single dual negotiator pistol weapon action. No, she didn't manage to do that in a single action. So she doesn't inspire. Uh, she could move, she doesn't really need to, and that means on a six or less, we get an inspiration point. Nope. Group one reinforce on a four or less. They do not. Group three is gonna be the rubble, so nothing happens there. And then it's Aradia. We'll take a walk and go one, two. Take a walk and go one, two. Take a walk and go one. And then not be able to enter this because it costs two squares. Godfrey's gonna go. Mm, what does he want to do? I mean, he could do a lunging attack, which he will. I'll spend a two to do it. So we can just murder him. Because uh, no matter where I go here, I'm basically going to have to murder folks. Uh, and it's gonna be 2d12. And that spindle drone. I do a wound. And then I'll do the five plus one, where I move twice, where I move afterwards, and make two attacks. And I do another wound, and I can just kill it. At level one now, and I get to move a square when it's done. And then I'll spend my three to move two, on two, and then I'll spend my six to shield wall. So this is gonna go. He's gonna spend his special three plus action to draw that discovery card on top of the thing and do an Omni scan. And then at the end of his activation, he'll potentially be able to, um, what should we call it, to get an inspiration point. Take a walk for one, uh, and then he'll use his last two to walk one and walk one, and use a destiny board to call the elevator. And get us out of here. Spindle drones, do they reinforce? They don't. And then what does this one do? It is in line of sight with a one. I think it flees. <laughs> Uh, not close, in cover, other, falls back. So it goes one, two, sorry, one, no, sorry, one, two, try to get a line of sight. Mm, one, two, three, to get a line of sight as far as possible. <laughs> it's moving, it does that hilariously. Uh, and that's round, event table, two, unfulfilled destiny, no destiny roll next turn, sweet. Right to roll an action dice, I think we get off this turn. Maybe actually, because it's going to be hard to get through that rubble again. I would have said yes, but then the game said no. Uh, decent rules for everybody. But no Destiny Pool is going to make this difficult. Goffert's just riled right up. And Daedalosis also kind of riled up. To move! <laughs> Initiative for this round. Group three, which is the rubble, so nobody. <laughs> Goffert. Uh, Daedalosis, group one, which is the Psykers, do they return, group two, which is the Spindle Drones, and uh, Neon. Are we any of that? I don't think so, I think we're pretty happy where we are, so let's start with Godfrey. Uh, it's gonna cost him a lot to get pretty much anywhere, so he'll just go one, then one, then one, and then one, two. And that's everything. Eight. One, because I can't, it's cost you space to move in this next one. Then one, then one, and then one, two. He'll get in the back. Let's say Losis. He'll just go one, two, with his first one. And that, oh, did I roll? I didn't roll for his inspiration point, did I? I can't remember. I didn't get one, no matter what. Uh, and then just overwatch the rest of these. Anything interesting is going to happen. 
Uh, we go to group one. Do they reinforce? 15, they do not. And then it's uh, group two, which is spindle drones. They reinforce, they do not. And then this one's behavior. 17, uh, for hidden, advance. So it's gonna move two, I believe, towards the closest, one, two, and then try and attack. He's in cover, and it's at far, so it's a D8. Does it get a crit? No. Uh, Medellin's gonna go, she's just gonna move, one, two, and then three will push her here. And she'll overwatch. The arm gets to go, one, two, for the three, the five puts her one. Uh, and then the next two fives, two, three. So you don't quite get off this turn because we didn't have Destiny die. And event phase, 12. Alarm trapped, we roll 11s to 20 uh, during the next activation phase. Destiny dice, the ones go away. Shin dice, I don't think anyone can get to us this turn, so we should be okay. All right, initiative. Daedalus, basically, it doesn't matter because we'll just, we'll just um, overwatch, or not overwatch, uh, covering fire. To Neom, and walk into the elevator. We're gonna fire Daedalosis up to Neom, and then we'll do Godfrey and Medellin, because why not? Uh, and uh, yeah, so she goes first. She takes a step for one. Everything else just goes in Overwatch. Uh, reinforcement rolls for the rubble, <laughs> no. Daedalosis will go, uh, he'll just stand there and go into Overwatch. Uh, that's it, really. And then 19 for the hostile group one. 10 for hostile group 2. Sorry, we rolled the hostile group. Uh, the 19 would become a 10. And then for group 2, it's a 5 and nothing. Z2, 13, hidden, advances, 1, 2, can't attack, and that's the combat encounter done. The thing is the passage 14. So passages are like entries to the next thing. So I know that the passage is going to take me this way when I exit on the map. And if, I, if the passage leads to a new chamber, that chamber number will be this chamber. The madness and insidious whisper permeates the room, riling up tensions and turning the explorer's aggressions against each other. Each explorer rolls three activation dice. Each explorer rolls uh, one fewer activation dice if Janice Drake is on the expedition and one fewer if Taddy Sapir fires there because they talk you down. Then leader orders, so we'll be starting with Daedalus this turn. Um, each player compares each of their dice results to the other explorers. If any of the results match, the explorers must pick one other explorer with a matching result and make an attack roll against that explorer using an attack action of the attacker's choice at range one. She becomes, sorry, I guess Janice Drake and Taddeus make it easier because you're rolling less dice. So less dice would be easier to get an exact match. So Nayam, uh, Aradia, and then Gothrit and Daedalosis. This has uh, Godfrit with no matching results, but matches ones with Aradia and uh, yeah, because any results, not all the results. So he's gonna make a weapon attack at range one. He'll do an eradication pistol attack, I guess, against he can't attack Godfrit, who'd who'd be who'd want to attack. So I guess we attack Aradia with our eradication pistol. What happens? She does a grievous wound. Crap. He compares and can attack either Daedalosis. Could attack Godfrey. So she's going to attack Godfrey at range one. She'll use her last pistol because it's not as good. And get a crit, of course. And then he gets to defend. And defend once. It just becomes a wound. Now we'll go. And she'll attack Godfrey as well because he had a four. Five, four, three. I knocked her when I was doing the thing. Um, and she'll use her, I guess, negotiator pistol. And also get a crit. Come on, buddy. Stick it, blocks it completely. And then he has to go and he'll compare to, uh, she's already wounded, I guess Daedalosis, and try not to kill him. Uh, he's so riled up though. Uh, does it take wound? Does he block it? Nope, takes a wound. We got wounded, or he'll become, actually sorry, God, not being going clockwise, so Goffrey becomes the leader. Um, <laughs> Uh, once the challenge has been resolved, if I came from chamber, chamber seven, go to chamber three. So we're going to chamber three. Oh my God, we found XO one. <laughs> Hilarious. So um, this is the XO one chamber. This is the archive. Clearly, some mechanicus hijinks were going on in here. There's three um, evil combat groups, encounter wise, and then this tile is blocked. However, an explorer can make a four plus action to wake up XO one, and he immediately joins the party as a retinue character. Super sweet. Uh, and so yeah, that's it. Let's see what we got for hostile encounters. Encounter number one is going to be some cultists. Sweet, they finally show themselves. Uh, cultists again. And uh, Trader Guardsman. We arrive from uh, Passage 14, so that's going to be over here. And uh, yeah, and we're just immediately stared down by some guardsmen.
Uh, it's more cultists for group two, uh, which means that they'll basically get two chances to reinforce. And then group one is going to be uh, six Trader Guardsmen hanging out, messing with XO1. Three exits, which lead to Passage 16, Passage 11, and Passage 21. All right, Destiny roll. Let's see what we got. Double threes go away. One, four, and five goes away. Nayam. Getting a pretty decent roll. We're gonna have to kill these cultists fast or the firebrand's gonna jack us up. It's like a super flamer. Uh, three, four, and six for Aradia. We do need to make some vitality rolls here too. One, four, and five. He is super riled though, which is good. And then double sixes, which are basically meaningless on Daedalosis. It's gonna be Nayam, then Godfrey. I almost wanted them to go first. They'd run towards me. Uh, group one, group two, Daedalosis again. Aradia and uh, Hostiles 3. Well, do we want any covering fire? I don't think so. I think we just go try and deal these cultists as fast as we can. Um, Daedalosis could mark targets first, which would be handy actually, because we could kill the Firebrand potentially. That's what we're gonna do. Do we wanna mark targets? Do we just wanna kill? <laughs> I think we just wanna kill. There's a six here, which is sweet and a couple of fours off the board potentially. So I think we just do that. Well, Neom's gonna go first. She's going to spend, sorry, she's going to spend one to move and go one, two, get into cover. And then no one's in cover from her point of view. So she might as well just start blasting. So she's been a four for a double shot, uh, try and kill. Well, she'll immediately inspire, actually, if she gets this. So let's just try and kill these three right here, including the leader. Um, so that's going to be the six with three shots. She gets double D8s. Looking for crits here. Try and kill the front one. Nope. Uh, doesn't have any inspiration points. This just totally fails. The next one does a wound. The last one, nothing. Four. Takes double shots. Uh, the wounded one kills him. The next unwounded one does a wound. Four off the board to do it again. Wounded one. Kills him. And then into the Sarge. Kills him. She could sit on that if she wanted. It doesn't give her a double shot. She might as well sit on it. Fire. Uh, she does. It's even worth having Nayam go first to feed her a bunch of dice. I just realized. Because then she could go burn all her dice. Have Nayam go first. Feed her dice to her. And then she could do a triple shot potentially when she comes in. I'm seeing the bonus. The, the benefit now of uh, the Psyker. Godfrey's going to go. Uh, he will spend the one off the destiny dice to, or board to make a vitality roll and get his wound back. His own one to take a step and go one, two. He'll spend, it's a four. There's no point in doing this. He'll just spend a four on a lunging strike. Going one and then making an attack against uh, these cultists. He'll just attack the one throwing a grenade and do nothing. <laughs> Uh, he has no destiny dice to reroll, or sorry, uh, extra dice to reroll that with. He'll spend his own five uh, to make two attacks into that square. Kills the first one, kills the second one, and then he gets to move a square afterwards. And then he'll spend the five off the destiny board to shield wall. Because of course he will. Soak up all the damage from these heavy weapons. That's group one, cultists, do they reinforce? No, the grenade launcher. Gets a four. A D8 <laughs> against, oops, against Godfrey. Because he's going to fire a crack grenade point blank into him. Hiding behind his storm shield. D8. Nothing. Uh, then it's going to be the next one. Uh, the heavy stubber, 14. That's a charge, so he's already there. Uh, he will make a shot with his heavy stubber. Sorry, 14 is, I was looking at the firebrand. Still a charge. Uh, heavy stubber up close. Oh, he's still looking at the wrong card. Ash, you're an idiot. Uh, it's still a charge. If he's ever a D12, up close. Does he hit Godfrey? He does. Does Godfrey block it? Rerolling because he's got a shield wall up. No, it takes a wound. Heal that wound so you can take another one, you useless dude. And then it's uh, the Firebrand getting to go. He rolls an 11, which is advanced. So he moves towards the nearest. He's already there. And then he attacks with his Super Flamer, Hellfire Torch. Uh, 2d8 into Godfrey because he has to attack him. Does nothing. And then it's hostile group 2. Which is 17. There's nobody. Reinforcements. And they've already activated. Losis is going to go. Hmm. Could we get there? We could get there. We could go turn on XL1 and have him do things. He's already gone though and he activates when the leader goes. So it would come down to next turn. Right, let's just do it. Uh, we'll take a walk. Sorry. We'll spend the one first to do a vitality roll. Let's do Let's be smart. 
And why am I rolling that die? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, we'll spend a six dude again. And nothing. Let's spend a six to do it again. Come on, buddy, just heal up. There we go. Mark uh, the firebrand and the stubber. Done. And then it's a Radia. Three to make a vitality roll. She only rolls a d6, though. And gets nothing. She'll spend her inspiration point to do it again. No. Nope. Four to roll it again. Come on. Oh, no, she's a grievous wound. What am I doing? Ugh. She can't even heal it. I'm just an idiot. She keeps her inspiration point. I'm doing things that literally are impossible. Um, ugh, she can't even heal. I guess we just take a walk. Go one, two into here. And then she'll throw a smite, which will kill this guy. And then do a wound to each of the others. I have to remember that he adds two to the behavior rolls of cultists nearby because he riles them up. Um, not that it would change the charges to anything. She has a four left, which I guess she could just hang on to. Down to a three to attack maybe. And it's team guardsmen. So rolling for some behaviors. Uh, we'll start with this guy. 10 is a advance, so he's going to go 1, 2, and not have a line of sight to anybody because of the way that that pipe is shaped. Uh, the next one gets a 12, which is advance. Same kind of move. Next one, 6, sneak, so it stays a line of sight. Basically an advance. The other one after that, 20, rushes, moves 2, and then he charges, moves, and then can't see anybody, so he moves again. Uh, closest would be these guys, actually. She could use her overwatch. <laughs> Uh, three will give her a last pistol shot on a d8. Nope, he's alive. So could Nam with a three for her pistol. It doesn't move. Uh, this sergeant gets a 15, which is a charge. So it goes one, two, and then you can't attack. So it goes one, two, because he wants to get adjacent. And then finally, the flamer is going to get a one, which is hold. Uh, did she inspire from killing that one cultist? No, she didn't. One phase. It's an eight, which is changing conditions. Draw a counter card. If there's a twist, apply it. No twist. Any roll. Uh, lock out the ones. Everything else goes in the pool. And then it's Neom. She's doing okay. Pretty killy looking. Radia still grievously wounded. Not feeling it this turn. No smites left in her. Uh, Godfrey, who got beat up after healing. And then Daedalosis, who's not great. <laughs> Gets sixes again. Of course. Well, let's see what the initiative order is. Big numbers, no whammy. Hostiles 2, which is the cultists. Aradia. Uh, Naomi. And then group 1, which is also cultists. Gotfrit, who's shield walling, so I'm not super worried about him. And then group 3 and Daedalosis, last. Group 2, reinforcements for the cultists. 13, so that's a no. And then um, it's going to be Aradia and Naom. They didn't really need to... Actually, I could have done that and given her a three, but she doesn't really need the three. I think we just do it as we were. Uh, we will aim. Yes, because then we can ignore cover. And then we're going to blast like crazy with our four. Two shots on these guys who are still marked. 2d8, Firebrand. Uh, does a wound. We can reroll one, though. Does a crit. Four wounds. And the Heavy Stubber. Just have to do a wound. We get him. And he dies. A two to do it again. Shooting into the... Boss guy, rerolling because of the covering fire. Gets a crit, kills him. Roll a crit on a d12 and he explodes. Nope, okay, yeah. He would have hurt Godfrey potentially. Then she's got a six to spend to rapid fire into these guys, into the first of the cultists. Crits him to death, that's the sergeant. And then the other one, who is wounded, uh, cannot reroll it because, oh, she has inspiration point. She has a third shot, never mind. She does that, does another one, kills him. Uh, she killed. Just you threw the single action, so that's not going to inspire. Kill five, ten, twelve wounds worth of dudes, and that'll give her two inspiration points. Move it all. I mean, she could. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty happy being in cover though. Yeah, she'll stay where she is. Right, he's gonna go. She'll spend two to put a three on Naom. Uh, then she'll spend her last two. I guess just to Overwatch. She'll just stay where she is. They went in order. So she actually went first. She's done nothing. She will do nothing. Because, oh, I could just say that they covered and fired. Which is fine. I'll just change them on the track. Because then the, the activation order is actually proper. Um, and Hostile Group 1 gets to go, which is Cultist. They reinforce on 1 to 4. Uh, sorry, 1 to 3. No, they don't. Godfrit, what does he want to do? Well, he's running out of people to kill. Uh, he could spend 2 to move, though. So he'll go 1, 
and go one, two. He'll spend, oh, I could have looked at that first actually. Ah, yeah, she could do it as well. And then he'll spend the three to go one, two. And then he'll spend four to make a double attack. Oh, he can't spend that one actually. He'll spend the five to make a hacking advance. Page 12, two attacks. Uh, does a wound, second attack. Does a wound, kills him. And then he can make a step into here. Two twos left. I can make a move and then a lunging strike. Yeah, might as well. I'll make a move. One, two, and then a lunging strike on a two plus. And that'll just be a 2d12 attack into one of these guys. We'll attack the melee guy. Doesn't work. Hostiles three is going to be uh, team guardsman. Uh, do I, sorry, do I uh, get any inspiration points on Godford? I don't. Activation roll for trigger guardsman. First one engaged. Six uh, will be a onslaught. So two attacks in a row. This is a melee guy who's wounded. Uh, 2d8. First one. Does a wound, do we block it? We don't, take a wound, uh-oh. Back, does nothing. Uh, next melee guy rolls a one, which I think is fall back. He's gonna try and double his move as far away uh, as he can. So he's gonna go one, two. <laughs> it's like impossible for him to go anywhere. He can't go through me. I just don't, I think he doesn't move. I guess he goes one, two to here. And then tries to get on my sight, but he can't. So he just stays where he is. He's gonna move closer to me then. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the last one's the last gun one. Rolls a five, which adjacent is an onslaught. So this is the last gun, I think it's just a D8. Uh, first attack hits, do we block it? No, oh my God. We can attack. Come on, Godfrey, it hits. We block it. He's not feeling good right now. He is, he is super jacked up. Uh, and that's Daedalosis. And two to move. And go one, two, three. And then he'll spend a four plus off of here to do his thing and grab a discovery card. Potentially get an inspiration point on the other round. Ooh, arc your deck. It's five for a servo claw attack. Why not? Get him. Punch this cultist. Or this dude. Does a wound. So stunned. Sweet. Punch him again. Because why not? Bam. Missed. Designate him. I'll reroll it. Still missed. And event 15 will be inspiration. Leader picks an explorer and they get an inspiration point. Well, we're going to give it to Neom. During her next activation, she can sweet, sweet inspire. And it's destiny time. Destiny pool. Fives go away. Everything else stays. Doing pretty good. Uh, she's pretty riled up. Godfrey is not feeling good, but gets a four. And then Aradia. Also feeling okay. And Daedalosis with four dice. Doing okay. Inspiration point. He did not. It's a 16 plus. Uh, three and one. We got some Psyker. We got some Neom. Daedalus. Oh, looks like we're gonna do okay. Everybody's going before Hostiles 2, which is still after the cultists. <laughs> Do you want to try and gambit? I mean, they're all dead. So the chances are they don't come back. And if they do come back, they're coming back ugh, right there, which could kill Godfrey. Do I feel lucky? I mean, I never feel lucky, but I might get lucky. Neom's the leader. Do you want to do any covering fire? I think we're covering fire Neom down to Aradia so that she can get fed dice because she does have a sweet, sweet six in case things go horribly wrong. Um, Godfrey's not feeling great and he's not shield walled either. He can't see anybody though, and he's not, his agility is okay actually, his agility D8. We just gotta hope he lives. Let's don't come back, because it's all cultists between now and then. There's two rolls for cultists to see if they respawn. So, yeah, I'm gonna take it. Cultists, oh god, they all come back. So they come back, and then the firebrand does not come back. Okay, well it's not the worst thing in the world. Can't see half can, so I'm not gonna be cheeky and make it so the heavy weapons can't see me. Uh, I could be cheeky and do that, but they're gonna attack immediately. Oh god. Because <laughs> they show back up. So the cultists, uh, with the grenade launcher, he needs to roll a d8. Does he hit? He doesn't. And then the heavy server's 2d12. Nothing! Oh my god. Well, I got a little lucky then. And then the auto gun is just a d8. It does a wound though. But we don't block it. I don't have any inspiration points. I got a fully wounded. It just moves. Let's try and get adjacent. All right, well, it's uh, Niam up first. She's spending three inspiration points to inspire because of course she is. Because then she just goes all sick house on folks. Uh, and everything gets cheaper, basically. Her gunshots all get cheaper. Move three, which is pretty sweet, which means she could get 
into Murder Town pretty fast. But she's not going to. She's just going to go and try and save Gottfried. So she'll go one, two, and then she'll make a negotiator pistol attack on that guy with a two. She won't spend the one or the two off here. She'll spend this to do the first one and then this to make the negotiator pistol attack because she can do a dually for a three plus now. So two shots, first one, nothing. Second one, kills him. Move and go one, two. Uh, then she'll spend a, it's a five plus, she'll spend her six to make three attacks. Uh, so into the wounded guy, he dies. Into the unwounded guy, he also dies. She'll spend a two to take another walk and go one, two, and end over here. And then the four for two more shots into this group. The eights, uh, into the sergeant or the cultist leader. Nope, doesn't do anything. And then the other one. How does it move? Well, it's onto a Radia. She can move. She's not gonna be able to inspire this round. She'll spend a three to go one, two. She'll spend a four to go one, two. She'll spend her six to wake up X01. He's awake! He lives! Now he'll only activate when the leader goes, uh, and the current leader is uh, Nam, so she's not gonna get to do anything. So that's gonna be then Daedalosis. He's gonna go grab this, I think. So he'll spend a two and a two to go one, two, three. He'll spend his four plus to put this away and then potentially roll for an inspiration point at the end of the round. What clue? Five to move again and go one, two. Did we get an inspiration point on Naam when she murdered all those guys? No. <laughs> then it's Godfrit. Well, he's got a six to try and make a vitality roll. Can you do it, buddy? Come on, get a sweet vitality check. No, he can't do anything. He's just going to stand there. I could actually spend the six to shield wall, which would have been way smarter, but I didn't. So Arati becomes the uh, the leader. And event phase. One. All is dust. All explorers lose an inspiration. So she loses an inspiration point. His Daedalus uh, automatically inspires X01 because he's part of the retinue because he knows how to work the, the machine parts. So he's moved to defense D8, agility D6, vitality D8, and he's got his grav gun, which is always a D8, and a hydraulic claw, which is a D12. Concentrate being the second and subsequent grav gun actions taken in an activation are at D12. If the target of the weapon action was a target of the last grav gun attack. Um, and then automaton, do not roll activation dice. He can take three of the following actions in any order. Move, grav gun, and hydraulic claw, and he can't use inspiration points. Uh, and then if Daedalus is taken out of action, turn X one's card back over at Secret to the side because he's he stops working so good. We're not feeling great. Destiny's gonna lock out the fours. We'll go away. Um, and then we're no action dice right now for Godfrey. He is just totally jacked up. I think this might be our last combat encounter of the round. Uh, and then it's gonna be a two. Radia gets almost nothing either. At least we found X01, and then Daedalosis, you need to stay on the board, buddy, because you're telling this robot where to go, is very preoccupied with pushing the Game Boy that makes that thing move. Uh, well, Godfrey's going first. That's not bad. Then Arata. Aradia, sorry. Then Daedalosis. Oh, that's good, because somebody can covering fire. Then group one, which is cultists. Down to here. So... Hmm. Couple choices here. We could try and heal or we could just straight murder. So everybody can see everybody, so simple stuff. We're gonna covering fire like this because they can see each other. Uh, Cause she needs to go second. Daedalosis is pretty happy where he is. He can't see anybody, so he can't covering fire anyway. And I think we're gonna just accept that this is, this is it. <laughs> it's gonna be Godfrey first. <sighs> we'll spend one to try and recuperate because we gotta get some wounds off us. And get one off, sweet. Do we do it again? Or do we try and kill somebody? Without five plus, I could kill two guys right now with hacking advance. And I could still move. So let's do that. Let's just do a hacking advance and still move. I could have shield walled again, but of course I'm not going to. Uh, and do I hacking advance? We're going to target the sergeant. We kill him. Uh, then we'll target the first auto gun guy and kill him like crazy. And then we get to move a square, which we'll is moving to cover. You can do this round. Uh, so then next up is going to be Nayam. They're not in cover from her point of view, which is cool. Uh, and I think she's going to start by picking off the heavy weapons. So she needs a three plus to do super murders. So, and we could kill three in a row. So let's just do a five plus and try and kill three in a row. Uh, so it's going to be D8s. So 
Stubber lives, uh, Grand Launcher dies, and other guy dies. Then she'll spend the six to do it again. <laughs> Stubber takes a wound, lives, and then dies. Four to do a double shot, does a wound, and then just kills him. And she just wiped all these folks out. <laughs> oh, does God forget an inspiration point on five or less? He does. And then these guys on eight or less? No. Inspired at least, which is kind of cool. You could use that to heal maybe. Uh, she's got a two left. Yeah, she'll just move. One, two, three. Over to here. With that two. She'll keep her two and do this one just in case bad guys show up. Because <laughs> she can cover him fire. Um, and then it's Daedalosis. He's gonna go call that elevator because we don't want this to bring bad stuff. So two moves of a one, two, and then one, two, and then he'll spend the three to move again and the five to call the exit because we all gotta get out of here. Does hostile group one reinforce? They do not. Big firebrand reinforce. He does. Uh, two, four, five, two, four. So he's gonna show up right here and immediately attack. Tries to fry Gottfried. Uh, it's in cover though, does nothing. He gets to go. Uh, she's just gonna move, I think. Does she have a six to spend? She doesn't, she's just gonna move. Uh, she will move three times and go one, two, and then one, two, and then one. I guess that means XO1 gets to go with his conversion beamer, <laughs> or his grab gun rather, and he can D8 shoot into the firebrand, so why not? Actions, first one. Crits, second one, does nothing. Third one, does a wound. So that's gonna be four wounds total, he's almost okay. Dead. That wasn't the worst thing ever. Event phase, five. Oh, sorry, that's actually the reinforcement roll for them, thank God, and then for these guys, also don't show up. Now it's the event phase, and it's a 12, which will be alarm tripped. Oh, reroll 11 plus for reinforcements. Yes, Mmm, double sixes lock out. Um. Gets a bunch of fours, which is what she wants for making the gun murder. Uh, for Aradia, she could pass on some sweet threes. For her Godfrey, she's got to die back. Yeah, it's a six. Of course it is. And then for Daedalosis, get some threes, a one and a five. We forgot to pick this up with him. I don't know what I was doing. I should just walked over there uh, and started on top of that. But I'm done. So let's do some initiative order. We got three. Daedalosis, Aradia, Hostiles 1, which is the Cultists, 2, which is the uh, Cultists again, and then Nayam and Gottfried. Oh, ugh. Who do we want to go? I think we go, we just want to get in the, the thing. Gottfried's going last right now, which is bad. He's going to covering fire with Daedalosis, I think. And then Aradia is going to covering fire with Oh, she can't see her. Never mind, I can't. Because that's not a line of sight. The best we can do, I suppose. And then group three, we'll see if those uh, pesky guards will return. They don't. Uh, and I don't reroll sevens, I only reroll 11 plus. So that's Godfrey going. We'll spend the two and the three. Well, let's spend a two for a vitality roll. Get one back. Uh, we'll spend the three to move. And go one, two. And then we'll spend his six to just move again. And go one, two, and get in the elevator. Let's go with Aradia. She's going to just spend that two to move back one. <laughs> and then uh, I guess hand a three to this. And then it's Hostiles one, which is the cultists. They don't reinforce, but I reroll the 11. They don't reinforce the firebrand. Gets an 18. Oh, he's jacked up. He's gonna... Firestorm. Nope. Close. Other. No, he's close. He's close to X01. All shall burn. Make a D6 attack roll against each explorer and hostile within two X's invisible to the Cultist Firebrand. Nobody. <laughs> uh, okay, sweet. Lights up the world. <laughs> uh, and then the group hostile group 2, which is also Cultists. 3. They reinforce, but they don't reinforce that much. Uh, three is Sergeant Stubber, and they immediately attack uh, as close as possible. So I guess they would both go there because two can fit with a large. Twelve and X01. 
Takes a crit. Uh, does he at least drop it down to a regular wound? He's defense D8. Yep, makes a regular wound right in the X01. And then um, the D6 attack from the last pistol. Nothing. Right, well, uh, <laughs> do we just want to get in? I think we do. She could kill all these folks though. She's already inspired, so she doesn't really care. She's just gonna walk in. One, two. Uh, then it's Stadalosis who can go. He is currently the leader, which means X1 will go after him. He'll just go, he's, he could pick this up. So he'll go one, two. Pick it up for a three, because he could get an inspiration point. So we get a discovery. It's Archaeotech. And then NMI activation, 16 plus. Get a discovery, sweet, get an inspiration point. Um, and then he'll spend his last two to move. And go four into here. Five off the board to move again, because he's got to make room for X01. So one goes and goes one, two, one, two, and he's done. Oh, we're better off than we were, but everybody's kind of wounded. I think at this point it's better to return to Precipice and just say jobs a good one, and we'll know that we ended in three. All right, well, so first things first, as we've ended our first expedition, the Menace Tractor goes up by one, which means we're minus one to all reinforcement rolls from now on. Um, but we found the archive, and let's see what our resource options are. Like I said, the resources on the other explorers are already there, so there might not be a lot from every vessel. Long Hauler Gamma uh, 3 Beta is going to give us a Technodendrite Rig Homing Rounds, and Anzio's Pseudogenitor. We've got a Multiphasic Analyzer from Seeker, a Vortex Grenade. What? Costs 8. And then a Holographic Replicator. The Ultimatum is going to give me an Amplivisor. Uh, specialist training maintenance and then medicine. All we're getting out of the Clarion is a hostile med pack, sweet, and a stimulant. Pretty cash poor right now. Godfrey's got a cash, uh, and if he goes shopping on the ultimatum, he'll get his free one. So you can spend something worth up to two, which means we could buy medicine. Training, which means that you can spend a one plus to make other people make vitality rolls. That's pretty sweet, actually. I think we're gonna buy that. So he's gonna spend his one to buy specialist training medicine. I'm gonna go back in the discovery deck, uh, and he'll shop over here. Uh, we're gonna have you have got some cashola, so you could spend two to buy both the med kit, and I mean you could also buy a holographic replicator, it's something that helps you like find stuff real well, or <laughs> you won't, can't afford the vortex grenade though. You don't have that much cash. So I think we go over here. I think he buys a stimulant in the hospital med pack for two and then keeps the rest of his cash. He's the trainer halls here, that's right. Uh, I can gain inspiration point for my next adventure on a 13 to 20. I do. The ultimatum's awesome. Uh, and then who else has cash? Hmm, just Aradia. She could buy maintenance. Uh, to increase the value of one of my explorer's activation is by one. I could make a six. Really, I want to buy this. I'll buy it for her. <laughs> and I don't have the cash to do it. So no matter what, I guess we'll just buy maintenance training. For one. Two, because she's on her own ship. An inspiration point. No, but she can reroll that so she doesn't get injured at least. 14. Uh, that's going to give her an inspiration point for the next adventure. Sweet. And then we'll just go over here with no cash. And not get an inspiration point, get an inspiration point. She'll start at two. Sweet. And everybody uninspires. And that was our adventure. So you have it, a return to Blackstone Fortress. We managed to make it into two chambers. Um, and then everybody was so jacked up. But we found X01, which is super cool. Uh, I told that was totally unscripted. I had no idea where I was going. I'm as like a, a classic fighting fantasy reader from when I was a kid. I have not skipped ahead and read these paragraphs. So I might blunder on the dark. And that does mean I have no idea how long this series is gonna go because I gotta clear all four shrines before I can attack the throne of Malix. Um, the downside of me ending it where I did was it cost three clues to get back to chamber number three so I'm gonna start back in chamber number seven it does mean I could take the path untaken um, and walk in a different a different zone so I go back and go back to the portal I went through it, the, I, I don't know we'll see right we'll see where I end up uh, but yeah so far having made it through a couple chambers or if I find more clues in the next adventure too I could just end my adventure and teleport back but we're already at menace level tracker one so it gets pretty bad the, <laughs> the further along you go. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you for more Blackstone Fortress in two weeks. Till then, I'm Ash. Apple Gaming.
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.